Hi, this is my video. You can't see me. The reason I called this little frog in the pond, you can't see me, is because he really didn't think he could be seen. I happened to know he was there, and I took a photograph of him, but his blending in was so perfectly well done with his body coloring and his camouflage that he was just very hard to see unless you knew where to look exactly. When this kind of frog, which is a green frog, emerges from a long winter hibernation in the mud, they're all dark colored. There's no green to see at all. Gradually the colors come out. I found this whole process fascinating and we really enjoy watching the frogs in our little fish pond that we built. My name's Patricia Allingham Carlson and I hope you like my video of how I painted my green frog in You Can't See Me. I started out with a sketch. I worked pretty hard to get the anatomy of this little fellow right. I'm coming in with very concentrated colors because I want them to be dark in some spots. I'm washing out the edge. I'm not exactly sure where the painting will start or stop, but this gives me some options to take it as far as I want. I'm using cobalt blue and indigo. And again, my colors are quite concentrated. I'm painting the water around the lily pads. The reason I'm using two different colors is to break up the monotony. One color might be a little boring, but water sparkles and moves and reflects. So I put different colors in and let them blend together. While it's still wet, I'm painting some of the under line lily pads so they will blend in around the edges and be soft edged. They'll blend right into the water since it's still damp. Next I'm moving on to the frog's coloration. I tried a mixture of colors, different ones, and I came up with the fact that uh, green and browns seem to work pretty well. The frog isn't just brown. He's brown with some sap green mixed in. So I tried using a mixture of burnt sienna and sap green. And it seemed to come very closely to approximating the color of this frog's body. Now all frogs are built differently and have different colorations, of course. I've also put some masking onto this picture so that when I paint, those areas will remain very, very white and I could then add the colors I want that might be lighter or might actually stay white. Now the frog's body isn't just different colors, but it also has different textures on it. Overall, it's a moist and smooth kind of skin, as amphibians have that kind of skin. But it also has bumps and textures and different ways of blending in with its environment. I'm putting some of these on wet on wet, and some of them will be coming on later dry. Anywhere you see the grayish areas showing on the frog is where I've applied masking. This frog is half emerged from the water and where his body goes into the water there was a white ripple showing. 
that's interesting to try to show in painting. And then interestingly enough, the frog changes colors halfway up his body. He goes from this greenish brown to suddenly being a very bright green. I'm making marks along his body as to where these lines and different parts of his anatomy form. He has hollows, he has ridges, he has much different kind of uh, formations than I had previously thought. But when I study a creature like this, I learn a lot about how they're built. Because this is a close-up of a frog. The reason I chose this picture to reference is because I loved how the eye looked. And I've never painted a frog in this kind of realistic detail before. Now I'm marking him where his color changes to the green and using some yellow because he was a greenish yellow. You could see two lily pads come up in front of the frog. So I will be painting them later. The ones that are under him I'm painting ahead of that, including the one his head is resting on. But for now, I'm just trying to get all the complicated structures of the frog's body. Including his shading. Where I put in a darker line or darker color, I will frequently come in with water next to it and around it to cause it to blend in to the rest of the skin of the frog. I have some iridescent paints and I was able to bring them out for use in the frog's eyes which have a beautiful iridescent amber coloring. I also just showed you the masking fluid that I'm using around the areas that are very light or that I'm trying to protect from paint running into. And I'm using a masking fluid that I prefer called Pebo, P-E-B-O. Seems to work very well when it's fresh, especially. And it comes off fairly easily. Some masking fluids do not. Now I have to be honest with you, the frog's feet look like alien feet. But I'm doing my very best to convey exactly what the photograph conveyed to me. And I know that the feet have webbing between them, webbed toes, to help the frog swim, but they were not showing up in this photograph, so I did not paint it. Perhaps they were transparent and the water was showing right through, or perhaps they were folded in a way between the toes that allowed them to not show.
And then there is a swirl of water or the ripple of the water where it goes underneath and is partly submerged. And that's going right through part of the foot. Now I'm blocking in more of the frog's body and shading as I go. This was the basic color of much of the body, was this greenish brown. But then the bumps on the skin, I'm painting them dark and I'll be lightening part of them so they look like they're somewhat three-dimensional and shaded. Working into the frog's head, I'm using an emerald green, sap green, and the yellow that I put down before to make a lime green. I'm putting in all the green areas that I see. The areas that are catching the most light, where they're sticking up, I'm making more yellow and much lighter in color. The areas that go in, naturally, I'll be making darker in color. They are the recessed areas, the pits, the shadows, and the shading of the frog. One of the eyes is partially colored, covered by a water lily leaf, and you could see that at the top. So I'm working around that leaf. And that's all part of the camouflage. A lot of detailing at this point, and a lot of blending. But I'm trying to paint just what the photograph is showing me. And it's a very interesting challenge. There's some brown blotches that come right up into the head. And you can see I'm working wet on wet because I put them onto the frog and then they quickly blend right in. I'm continuing to work on the foot and I'm keeping that sort of on the blurry side because it is partially underwater. When the paint's dry, I can build up more layers of color. And I'm doing that by glazing color layers.
in the areas that I'm keeping lighter are the structures of the frog's body where he sticks out a little bit. Again, I've never so closely studied a frog, seen how his nostril works, how the eardrums work, and the parts of the eye. So it's very interesting. I'm learning as I work. Now it's time for my iridescence coming into the eyes. They're a sort of a bronze. So I'm mixing up some ochre and some copper colors, as well as some oranges. This will show up very nicely in light or in person. Although on the video, the colors just mainly look like regular colors. But I enjoy using iridescence when it's an appropriate place for them. As you know, eyes of any creature are not one color. They are yet generally darker around the edges. They are lit up around the interior area. And there's almost always a sparkle of light somewhere reflected on the actual eye itself. And this is an important thing to include in any painting of an eye. The light reflects onto the eye because the eye is moist and it gives the sign of life that the creature is alive and a sparkle of life to whatever creature or person or whoever you're painting who has eyes to look at you. And once an eye goes on to this person or creature, it's interesting how they seem to come to life. Now I'm removing the masking. You could see it took off a lot of the paint I applied, but I did retain the lights that I wanted, and now I can work around that. Now, I did not realize that a frog, or this kind of frog anyway, had an elliptical pupil. I thought frogs had round pupils, but they are more of an oval shape. But that's something I learned by painting a frog. And I wouldn't have thought they would have any white area. But this one did in the photograph, so I included it. Now I'm shading the actual eyeball and making it darker where the shadows hit and around the edges. I also will make it darker directly under the lid because generally the lid of a creature casts a shadow onto the eye itself. Now I'm working on that eardrum which is an odd structure but I'm closely looking at my photograph so that I can see how the eardrum is built. And I just continue to work in that manner. It's funny how that eye getting painted on made the frog sort of come alive. But now he's continuing to develop his depths, his structures, 
and he's definitely getting to be very frog-like, which is fun. I continue to add detail to the body. What I'm doing here is going back to all these little bumps on his body. With a damp brush, I'm removing some paint from the top of each one. I'm trying to make them look very light. Two reasons. I'm trying to make them look like they stick out, and I'm also trying to make them look like they're a little bit wet because he is in the water and just came out of it, presumably. I'm also painting a dark line under many of the bumps to look like a shadowed area. And this helps it look like a textured physical structure that is actually sticking out. I'm adding more darks around the line or ridge that goes along two sides of his body to make them stand out more. And I'm going back and detailing and adding another layer of color on the, some of the lily pads that are on the bottom. I'm also taking some color off of this one to make it look like a ripple of water going through. I'm using a damp brush and blotting after I paint. I'm putting in some vein lines on the lily pad. And when you see me blotting, it means I'm removing paint. And detailing the eardrum. I've been putting off working with the mouth area because I didn't quite understand it. They're folds of skin that were confusing to me, but I decided to simplify it a little bit and just paint what I saw. So that's exactly the approach I'm taking. Now I'm tackling that ripple of water. I'm adding some grays. I'm adding some streaks of color from the water underneath showing through. And again, I'm trying to paint just what I see and not what I think it should look like because I decide that's my best approach since I really don't know how to paint a ripple of water in quite this manner. I'm doing the best I can and learning a lot about how to do it as I go. This will be a fun thing to try in the future is to work on some of these ripples up close. Quite a challenge. I'm softening along the edge too, where it touches the frog's body. Because in the photograph, the water did look soft. It did not look hard. And when I say I'm softening, it means I'm using a damp brush and breaking down the paint line between the body and the water. Now this leaf is on top of his head. So I'm painting it in to be very bright along the edge. And that will tend to make it stand out and look like it is on top. I'm going to keep most of the leaf fairly pale. And you can see where I've put the fold down the middle because this is just how that leaf was built.
breaking down the water edge a little more. I'm bringing some more color in from the underneath water. So next I'm going to work on some more of the leaves that go under the frog's head. The shadowed leaf, I'm starting with the shadow. And then painting in the veins that I see in the photograph. There was also a discolored part of the leaf. So I painted that in with ochres and with burnt sienna. And I'll blend it in with my green. Interesting that the colors echoed the frog's body so closely. But that's all part of his cam camouflage. Going back and deepening that shadow three times now. And I'm using a mixture of hooker's green, dark, and some indigo for that shadow. Now this is a leaf that the frog is resting his little head on. And again, it's very close to the surface and in the foreground, so I am keeping it light in color. I'm finding the veins in the leaf and working wet for that part. Meanwhile, going back to the frog and doing a little more shading, building up another glaze of color on his body which makes him even more vivid colored. Working with the eye a little bit more, getting my details the way I want them. Now I'm going back to the leaf that the frog's head is on. And I do want the line to be pretty good and clean between his mouth and the leaf. Painting in a darker area along that mouth will make his lighter colored mouth stand out more. So I am going to add several layers of shadow there. I'm painting along the veins in a dark and then I'll be blending those colors because this leaf is primarily a light colored leaf. Working into the eye to make it look more spherical, bringing in some darks, and there is a line of that iridescent metallic color along the ridge that goes along his body. So I painted that in just now. I didn't know that frogs had that kind of iridescence on their body, but again I'm learning as I paint.
I also decided to add more of that lovely burnt sienna color to the frog's body. It was there I decided to exaggerate it just a little bit because it adds a nice complementary color to the blue of the water. Now this leaf on top I've sort of been saving for a later point. It was just a bit boring. And what I decided to do was to understate it. Since it was close to the camera, it came out just a little blurry and light colored. So I decided that was how I was going to treat it. There was no need to make a hard, very, very, very detailed leaf at this point when the frog's detail was the most important part of the painting. So I gave the leaf its basic colors, blended them a bit, and kept a lot of it light. It keeps it looking like it's on the surface and close to us without being overstated. keeping sure that my edge is nice and crisp because it is overlapping the frog and I want to make sure that is very apparent, but softening some of the edges, edges toward the bottom that don't matter as much. And here comes another layer of shadow around the frog's face and the leaf that it's on. Again, this front leaf I'm keeping very soft, very blended. And that's it for my demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it. And this was You Can't See Me. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe below. If you subscribe, you're not going to miss any future videos. There's also some links below to click on. You can see my art page on Facebook with all my latest paintings, as well as all the paintings I've done over the past 10 years. There's also a link to my blog about art and life, and to some products I use to create art. There's also a link to my own art products page, so people can purchase different products with my art on them. Your comments are always welcome. And I'll see you next video.